Greetings on this Palm Sunday 2020. It's a, a new time for us in, in history. It's a time for us to gather today for worship. Let me just say, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. Let me open with the word of prayer. <clears throat> oh God, we ask today that you would mercifully help us that you would assist us because you are our God of salvation. We pray that today that you might enter with us, Lord, and bring joy to those of us who are gathered together to worship you. You remind us that you have given us, given us life, that you are immortal. And that through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we might have eternal life as well. It is right that we come to you today and praise you, O God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And on this day, as he entered into the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings, by those who spread their garments and branches of palm uh, along the way. Let us also today remember those branches as signs of his victory. And let us grant that, that we might bear them also in his name. And may we hail him forever as our king as the Lord of our life. And may we follow him all the days of our life into eternal life. I pray these things in the name of your Son, along with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Today I want to share with you this passage from Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied 
and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a, on a coat the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the coat, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds went ahead of him and, and followed, and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of his holy word. The story that you've just heard is not new. It's an old story. One that we know because we've heard it many times before, but also because of its close connection with what we have come to know as Holy Week. This is the week of activities the Gospel writers write about before the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. And I say this morning that the story is not new because most of us are, have heard it before, but we're hearing it this year in, in a new manner. Except for a few rare occasions, most of us have, have always heard this story in a crowd of people. <clears throat> Probably nothing like what gathered on that day when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. But still, we have been in the habit of, of gathering in, in church buildings with many people to hear this, this palm story read. But today, here we find ourselves sitting in our homes with our families, listening to this account of, of people crowded together shouting Hosanna. And let me remind you again that the word Hosanna translated means save us. Some scholars think that by this time, as Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, that Hosanna had just become a, an informal greeting. But I don't. I don't believe that believe that the people that were gathered there that day were certainly looking for a savior, someone to save them, to save them not only from themselves, but also from the, from the, the situations that they find themselves in, much like us today. Has there ever been another time in our world in recent years where people around the globe are so desperately looking for hope, like people are doing today in the midst of this ongoing pandemic. This has to be a, a major catastrophic event for at least the younger third of the world's population, if not more. And I know that even as I say that, there are places around the globe where people have suffered ever so severely, and we here in the United States have been unaware or indifferent to their plights before this event reached around the globe. But I'm here today to tell you that Matthew points out that not everyone was fully aware of who Jesus was, even if they were shouting and singing along the streets that day. And the reason I know that is because Matthew says that there was a crowd, yes, but the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? And even, even the, the crowds called him the prophet who comes from Galilee, not the promised Messiah or the king that such a ritual would announce. Apparently not everyone was convinced that the title Son of David made Jesus a king. 
you know, Luke was the one that wrote the words from the cross where Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. But here in Matthew's gospel, Matthew is implying that the crowds don't know what they're doing either. It's not so different from today. We have many voices shouting, Hosanna to the government. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, make us safe. And those same voices don't even wait a week before they shout, crucify somebody. Most are shouting it to the president, to, to the governor, to the local hospitals and, and medical personnel for not being prepared. Let me ask this question. Why do we always have to blame someone or something for everything that happens? When unforeseen things happen, you do your best that you can to deal with it, right? On this day, nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus made preparations for this event. He, send, he sent the disciples into the village to retrieve the donkey and the coat, and, and it was not necessarily a, a supernatural event, but it was the result of a planned approach. And still later in the week, people shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! So I guess, I guess if we want to be the critics, we could say, well, Jesus didn't plan well enough. Do you know what? On this particular day, Jesus was making his declaration to the city of Jerusalem and all the people gathered. It was another attempt to win their hearts to the mission and ministry that, that he had been sharing and teaching for three years. And he did all this knowing that by the end of the week, things were going to turn. And by choosing the donkey as a means of conveyance, he declares himself to be a king of peace. He could have chosen a, a white charger or, or a war horse for a, a conquering warrior king, but that's not what he chose. Instead, the peace that the king of peace offers is different from what we seek in the world. Jesus came as the King of Peace. And his peace is not the same as world peace or a peace of mind. Most of us have, have given away a, a peace of mind so often that we don't have any left, right? And that could be the P-I-E-C-E -E or P-E-A-C-E, -E, the one. Dr. Henry Clouds is one of my favorite authors, and, and I, I listened to him on a podcast, a Jesus Calling podcast, uh, tell about taking an airplane flight, and, and he said that um, on this particular flight, he got, got seated in his seat beside a woman, and she asked him what he did for a living, and he said he was a, psych, a psychiatrist, and and he said, I don't normally do that. He said, uh, because usually if I tell people that, then, then it ends up being a really, really long conversation. So he said, I, uh, I, I just tell people now that, that I write books about Jesus and would you like to talk for a while? And he said, they just uh, immediately pop up the newspaper. But on this one particular occasion, he did share with this woman that he was a psychiatrist. And she said, well, I, I need to talk to you about my boyfriend. And and then she goes on about her boyfriend. And so he asked her, hey, what's the deal? And she said, well, I just broke up and I'm devastated. I'm really depressed and, and, and I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up going back to him. And so uh, the conversation goes on and on. And, and, and it, Dr. Cloud says, it sounds like that he kind of gets angry whenever you don't do what he wants. And she said, yeah, that's it. She says, I can't live with that. I, and I break up with him, and then I get sad, and I go back, and it's just his anger, she said. I just, I just can't put up with it. And, and the, Dr. Cloud says, well, what happens then? 
and and she she said if I go back to him then he's not angry anymore if I go back and do what he wants and Dr. Henry Cloud says there's an old saying it says if if you rescue an angry man you only have to do it again tomorrow he actually was quoting from Proverbs 19:19, and she looks at him and she says that's amazing. Where did you get that? And he said, that comes from the Bible. But here's, here's what I wanted to share that out of that. We find ourselves living in this time of, of being isolated from one another or this time of being held hostage in our homes because of the coronavirus. And, and there are a lot of people being angry and, 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 um, I just made the comment to my wife the other day that probably would be a lot of divorces come out of this because families are are sheltered in home and they're not used to that. And, I, and I've already seen where that's true. There are divorce cases are already on the rise and that's sad. But Dr. Henry Cloud said, whether it's codependency or attachment problems or structure relational uh, relationship problems or structure of personality problems, he says it doesn't matter because you've got this whole other area of depression and anxiety and addictions that are all caused by our inability to process negative things. And so he says it doesn't matter if we're abused or whatever. We can't process that pain well. And he said, that's, that's where most of us live. He says, psychologists will talk about the, the world that we live in as being like this, but it's not supposed to be like this. He says, the gap between the way that it is and the way that it ought to be, that gap is called pain and suffering. There are a lot of people today that are living in that gap of pain and suffering. And they act out. And they get angry. It's because we don't know how to process that. So, this day in which Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the crowds were shouting and cheerful and by the end of the week it all changed people were angry because they didn't know how to process what was taking place I don't want you to think for a moment that you or we are the only people to live in pain and suffering to live between the way it is and the, and the way it ought to be most of us if, if we're honest we're just inconvenienced instead of in suffering and pain, but we still want to act out and, and become angry with others, and which leads to doing and acting in ways that we are regretful of later. But realize this on this Palm Sunday is as Jesus came into Jerusalem that day to bring peace as the king of peace Jesus also comes to us today to bring us peace on Friday Jesus hung on that cross for you as well as well as every other person every other person that has a heartbeat Jesus hung on that cross for them we know that we're going through a something that's temporary it's just like the the cheers and the shouting hosanna on that day 2000 years ago but what jesus did for us to provide a, a means and a way for us to his everlasting peace that is eternal and the choice that we must think about and consider today is this am i seeking temporary relief from this pain that i am experiencing because we are living in the between times, between 
the way it is and the way it ought to be. Or am I after that eternal peace that comes from having a, a true loving relationship with the King of Peace, with the Son of David, Jesus the Christ, the one and only true Son of God? Let me tell you something today. Who do you hang out with? You need to be careful who you hang out with because you become like the people that you spend time with. You, you take on people's moods and emotions and attitudes and, and all of that is just as contagious as COVID-19. So you have to be careful with who you let yourself spend time with. But again, remember, the King of Peace comes today, enters, enters into our lives today even, so that we might have that peace. Amen and amen. Now at this time, let us prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. I have here with me today a bread and juice. Uh, I hope that you have prepared. Uh, if you didn't have grape juice, that's fine. Use whatever juice you have or whatever is suitable uh, uh, for you and your family, those who have gathered there with you. Let me remind you that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven for if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. And for my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood, my blood abides in me, and I in him. Those are from John chapter 6. Let's move into a time of, of prayer. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us take just a few moments of silent prayer to offer up our personal confessions of sin. Receive these words of assurance. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us of all of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. You can at this time offer signs of peace to one another if, if you so desire. Let's continue our celebration of Holy Communion with praying of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, the gifts of God for the people of God. Receive them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ given for everlasting life. Come here, Rhonda, you can have some communion. Body of Christ. Let me offer this prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we give you praise and thanks for this holy communion of the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the pledge of our redemption. And we pray that it may bring us forgiveness of our sins, strengthen our weaknesses, and everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as a benediction, I would like for all the children that are worshiping with us this morning to raise your hands toward the screen, the camera, whatever, wherever you may be, and repeat after me, God loves you, Jesus is alive, now go tell everyone. God bless on this happy Palm Sunday.